The vibes are high. Energy is high. It's great to see you guys. So last week we had Colin Mitchell um, and we discussed podcasting, basically the fundamentals, how to get started, how to monetize. Are we working, focusing more on brand or monetization, the pros and cons to both um, and just how, how to get started. Actually, this week we have Colin's business partner, Christopher Decker. So quick introduction, and then I'll let him take over and uh, let him go over a little bit about the content side of podcasting. But Chris Decker is the co-founder and CEO of SalesCast, <laughs> the operating system for B2B podcasting industry. SalesCast manages 60 of the top B2B podcasts across 1 million listeners. He's recorded or been present for over 1,000 podcast episode recordings, which is a lot. Uh, Chris is an active community builder in the Orange County startup ecosystem through the Eureka building and their respective podcast, Eureka Moments Only. Chris hosts the Foundations podcast, has written one, I love this part, he has written one terrible business book, and maybe you could drop that link in the chat later on so we could read that terrible business book there, Chris, and engage his in ministry work as a leader in the Celebrate Recovery Ministry, as well as his newsletter, The Founder's Pastor. <clears throat> Chris celebrates three years of sobriety as of March 2020 to 2022. My hat's off to you, Chris. And lives in Irvine with his wife, Taylor, and their son, Lou. During his free time, Chris is a painter, writer, and family vlogger. Without further ado, Mr. Chris Decker, we give a warm welcome to you, and the floor is yours. Hey, everyone. Uh... It's it's like it's kind of awkward to have someone like read a read a bio of you. Um, I'm going to jump straight in. I prepared a, a talk for you today on how to grow your your show audience sustainably. That's the name of the game for today. Before we get started, um, does anybody have anything they want to cover spe specifically today? Any like burning questions that they have about growing their podcast or growing shows in general. And feel free to drop them in the chat as, as we go along and we'll have room after that. Um, we'll have room after the session for some Q and A. All right. So let's jump right in. So this is how to grow your show's audience with sustainable methodologies. Um, as Brett was saying, we are the, the operating system for the B2B podcasting community of sales, marketing, and revenue professionals. Um, our mission is to connect 100 million sellers to the power of story. We offer fully done for you production, manage guest tours, and we have a free and a, and a paid community. Um, we manage 60 of the top 10% B2B shows um, across a million listeners. We have a team of 15 full-time staff. So how many of you have a podcast you want to grow or are interested in growing, starting a growing podcast? You don't have to answer right now, but just think of this in your mind. How many of you have a limited amount of time? How many of you need to increase lead flow and top line revenue? Let me ask you this. How close are you to the original reason you got in business in the first place? Have you strayed away from that original purpose? How many wish you could go back to not knowing how hard it is? <laughs> how many of you have a story to tell but don't know where to start? You don't have to raise your hands or anything, but I know there's at least someone out there um, that resonates with one or more of these. Today, we're going to take a fresh look at content, but first I want to go over my favorite quote. Sure, that's what they all say. Possibly you <laughs> is the author of that quote. Um, today, I am hoping that you can pause your analytics brain, let go, and be open to some new ideas. You may hear some things you've heard before, or I may expose you to a new way, a different kind of perspective than you've heard before. If you can pick up one, two, three things from this talk, it's been a success. My goal is to impart a lot of the, the, the some of the wisdom from failures that, that I've had in this 
podcasting journey. But before we start, um, I host the Foundations podcast. Every episode is a new start, a new beginning. We cover topics and have guests that focus on leadership, culture, marketing, entrepreneurship, growth, and personal development. Um, we're available on Apple, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts. You can go directly to foundations.simplecast.com to subscribe to the show or check it out. Okay, so why should you listen to me? Well, I started my first podcast on hard mode. This is an actual screenshot from my first podcasting setup. It was not fancy. I had a Logitech C290 1080 webcam, 100 bucks. I had two $30 USB mics, and all of this ran into a Mac Mini. Um, and I did not know what I was doing. I stared into that webcam, doing solo episodes, talking to the internet, a completely empty room for the first time. Um, started to figured, okay, well, if you have a podcast, you might as well bring guests onto the show. And so I started inviting my friends onto the show. This is my friend, Mark, who was, who was glad to be a guinea pig. So I've started from absolute scratch and have figured out a lot of these things the absolute hardest way possible so that you don't have to. <laughs> I really don't want you to have to feel the same pains that I did. Okay. Before we jump into the next slide, does, does anybody have a preconceived notion about growth? You may have heard terms like growth hacking or, um, or, or you know, all kinds of new marketing channels, things of that nature. In this next slide, I'm going to break down the different stages of growth and why they're important. I'm also going to talk about the impact they have on your business and the level of hardness it is to accomplish. And the level of hardness is also the thing, the easier it is, the less time it takes, the harder it is, the more time it takes, if that makes sense. So that preference, I'll move on to the next slide. Okay. Growth in its basic form is a function of acquisition, retention, and referral. Acquisition is getting a new person to come and, and pay attention to what you're doing. Retention is getting someone to stick around. And referral is when they go and tell someone about what you're doing. So I'll start at the bottom, our total addressable market. The podcast audience specifically, there's 2.8 million shows and there's 104 million listeners. This has a 0x impact on your growth because it's impossible to reach everyone. It's literally impossible. I've tried, no one can do it. You can't reach everybody. It just doesn't work. One, one stage up, acquisition. These are your guests and your earned audience, the people that are coming to your show. People are coming to your show either through a social media post because you begged them, because their mom, <laughs> your mom, told uh, them about the show and they said, hey, you need to check out what Chris is doing. That was my first audience. Um, and this is really hard to do because it's sometimes it's very one-to-one. -one. You're blocking and tackling, pulling people into your funnel. It's, it's, it's very difficult. And this has a 1x multiplier on your growth. The next stage up is retention. And this is how many people stick around. So this is how many people stick around. They've gotten some sort of value from what you're offering, what your show is doing. They enjoyed the conversation. Maybe you had a unique interview style. You had a pretty unreachable guest or it's, there's just some sort of angle or component that they say, all right, I, I want to stick around and see what's going on here. And you're able to be reliable and consistent with your posting schedule every Wednesday at 8 a.m every Monday and Thursday at 2 p.m. You've proven that you're a partner with the different podcasting platforms. You've proven that you're reliable and some people want to stick around. This has a 50X impact on your growth. You get one person in, let's, you get, you get 10 people in. Um, those are, those are one-to-one. -one. If most of them leave because what you're doing sucks, 
that was all wasted effort. It's very doable to get retention. It's very doable to talk to your audience, to learn who they are, to figure out what messages and things that they, that they need. The next step up is referral, which is how many people are actually sharing your thing. Now, this has a 100x multiplier on your growth. And it's also the easiest thing to do. If you put the effort into making something really special, if you can get your if you can get your mom to tell one of her friends and get their friends to tell one of their friends and you got one of your clients to share it on their newsletter and all of a sudden that one person that you earned that's sticking around is doing a lot of the work for you this is also the easiest thing to do so today's presentation we're actually going to go top down i'm not going to teach you how i'm not going to spend too much time on how to acquire new people into your funnel. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on retention, but I am gonna start with referral. What's going to make that thing very, very shareable? And I guarantee if you figure that out, you will never have a problem with growth again. You see, referral is a function of shareability. Just like a match in this illustration, Sharing the flame with another match doesn't put the match out. You know, you have a certain amount of wood. Just forget that, that part. Imagine the match has a, uh, an infinite amount of wood, infinite wick, and you can just share this flame with as many people as you want. There's an infinite amount of shareability in a match's flame. But what is shareability? Shareability is a function of remarkable content, which means somebody can remark on it. It's remarkable. Remarkable content knows what it is and who it's for. So you may have come to this talk expecting us to focus exclusively on outcomes, which is the outer circle in the right illustration. But this is what happens. This is actually the most uncontrollable thing. So if the lessons that I've learned in recovery is to understand what are the uncontrollable things in my life and what are the things I can control. And I also pray for the wisdom to know the difference. So I can't control how many people stick around to my show. I can't control how many people share what I do. The one thing that I can control reliably every time is what I say and how I say it. How I say it is processes. These are the systems that you install in your show, your consistency, maybe you're doing 30 minute interview episodes and you're publishing once a week and you're, you've got this thing going down, you figured that out, you're making small changes along the way. What I say is a function of identity and vision. So we're going to focus and drill in on those two things, because if we start there, everything is going to kind of blossom from that core. Identity is kind of like asking the question on the left, who am I? Vision is kind of like, what do I see? And what I see usually is kind of like what my purpose is. So this little robot, like what is my purpose? So on the left identity, I'm going to give you mine, at least in the podcasting space. I am a podcaster. I am an influencer. I am a thought leader. I am built to serve people. What is my purpose? I see people connecting to their story. I see a world where people feel accepted and not isolated. I see a hundred million people transformed by stories. I see us changing the world of B2B sales. That's what I see and who am I? Okay, but how do I get to that identity part? Well, let's talk about identity. With your show, with your content, with things that you're doing, largely have to do with whatever is kind of going on in your head. So I'm going to talk about lies and truths. There's a shocking, there's a shocking statistic that 44% of Americans can't go longer than 20 minutes without saying or believing some kind of lie, whether that's on social media, a white lie, um, any kind of lie. Lies are so prevalent in society that the things that actually stand out nowadays 
are the truth. So I'm going to give you some lies that I tell myself, and then I'm going to tell, I'm going to share what the actual truth is. And you may want to do this kind of exercise with yourself later to kind of examine, you know, are some of the things that I'm thinking and saying to others actually serving this greater purpose of the podcast or your content or, or whatever you're doing with your business. I'm 29 years old. I tell myself all the time, I'm too young to be a leader in the B2B space. What do I know? I don't deserve recognition. Why should anybody pay attention to me? That doesn't make any sense. What have I done? I'm not like Joe Rogan. I don't have this amazing bubbling personality and the ability to talk to rock stars all day. It's just really not what I have. But here's the truth. Um, I have experience co-founding multiple companies and working with some of the top B2B marketing companies in the world. I like to say that um, I, stay hum I try to stay humble and focus on learning, always be learning. My focus is on serving people. And part of that is creating a platform for stories and change. Each member of my community gains something from being a subscriber. If you want to recognize me for that, that's fine. But here's the truth. I'm not like Joe Rogan. Thank God I'm unique. Thank God I'm not like Joe Rogan. We don't need more Joe Rogans. We need more yous. So we, talk, we covered identity, and that's largely going to be a personal exercise for you to go through. But I'm going to talk about vision. A vision requires asking this question. What is an end state that is so compelling that I have no choice but to grow to achieve it? Something that's going to pull you, that's going to pull your audience, that's going to get them to stop and wonder, how can I be a part of this? This is pretty crazy. My vision, this is kind of crazy, but I like it. Have you ever thought, oh, this is a little crazy, but I love it. I know there's some people that are nodding their head right now. My vision personally is to work closely with the top chain, top 10, top 10 change makers globally and use the art of story to transcend barriers and empower 100 million people to step out of isolation and into acceptance. 100 million people to step out of isolation into acceptance, to know that they're not alone. We at the end of this whole like two year thing that we've gone through, there are more people that are feeling alone than ever. I'm staring, I'm in my studio staring into a camera, and there is no one around me at the moment. My work environment has completely changed. I know a lot of yours have too. <clears throat> you see, a goal that requires processes to achieve, okay, to transform how B2B sales are done in the United States by having a hundred of the top business podcasts under management. See, we actually wrote that when we had zero. Now we have 60. So we just need 40 more. Maybe there's some in the audience today. What is the outcome of this vision? A thriving business. That's just it. If we, if we, can, if we are moving towards something, we are growing. See, whatever's not growing is dying. It's just the law of nature. Whatever's not growing is dying. So you might as well be growing. Okay, but what do we grow? Here's what I say every chance I get. At SalesCast, we partner with visionary entrepreneurs and B2B sales leaders to produce a podcast that one, builds new relationships with your ideal clients, two, serves your community through impactful content, three, drives more ethical sales in your business through your own platform. When our ideal client profile hears this, they say, oh, wow, you totally get it. How do I get started? How do I be involved? Where do I go? If you heard this and you weren't thinking that, then you're probably not our ideal client. Maybe we need to expand that. Who knows? I'm going to check the chat to see if there's any gems in there. Uh, Brett saying, even if we don't have a podcast, this is prevalent for social or content creation with anything. 100%. Word of mouth is huge with anything in life. Being shareable will do so much more for you. Uh, 1 million followers. I, I'm probably inspired by that book. I read that book, really enjoyed it. Um, Michael saying, I have two planned, one for each of my brands planning, but haven't launched yet. Um, Robert Davis in the process of starting one in pre-production right now. 
two clients that want to start podcasts. Frank currently has one. Uh, awesome. Okay. Now, does this make sense to everybody on referral? I'll just take a step back. You want to have growth that is infectious growth, contagious. Jonah Berger, that's a great book to read on growth. It's something that's very shareable. Shareable is a function of remarkable. Remarkable knows what it is and what it's for. To know what it is and what it's for, you have to know what you say and how you say it. To know what you say and how you say it, you have to focus on identity and vision. In order to build your identity, you have to sort through the lies and get to the truth. In order to talk about vision, you have to ask yourself, what is an end state that is so compelling that I have no choice but to grow to achieve it because whatever's not growing is dying. And you need to boil it down into a statement that if your ideal client profile hears it, then they say, oh, wow, you totally get it. How do I get started? And this can be accomplished um, in your podcast through repetition, through an ad, through the kind of content that you do. All of these things are going to just start to, to come out. And as you're pulled toward this identity and vision, you have no choice but to grow. People have no choice but to, to, to say, you really want to reach 100 million people? And I say, yes, I do. They say, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I want to help you. Now let's talk about retention. The reason why I started with referral is these things are going to have a hundred X impact on your business. Retention is only 50 X. So we're going to talk about that for a minute. Retention is a function of connection and repetition. I don't know how many people here have ever seen a Rolodex, but growing up, I would see um, my great grandmother was a real estate agent and she kept all of her business cards in a Rolodex and, and, and anytime she would go networking, she would still network well into her 60s and 70s. She would bring back a stack of business cards, put them in her Rolodex. And then like on Sunday afternoons after open houses, she would go through the Rolodex and leave people voicemails or just call them randomly five, 10, 15 at a time every Sunday, just continuing to do this connection and repetition equals stickiness. You've heard this term in marketing before, stickiness. Stickiness is connection and repetition. Okay, I'm gonna give you some data just across the shows that we do. And then in a few more slides, I'm gonna tell you what I think this data means. We, I have a hypothesis, but I mean, I, maybe, maybe you have some ideas too. So on the top here, we have like a standard 30 minute interview. You have your host, you have your guest. And this is available on Apple Podcasts. We can get retention data. How many people stuck around for what percentage of the episode? 67% average completion rate. That means most people don't, I mean, a lot of people don't make it through the entire episode. There might be some outliers, but it's like, okay, I heard some stuff from this person. It's pretty good. You know, every once in a while you get an outlier where you have a really special guest and like they're very compelling, but most of the time it's going to be like 67%. Now for a solo episode where it's literally just the host sharing on a topic and I'm also adding the, the, the layer of shorter, so five to 10 minutes has a 91 plus percent completion rate. Now, before you say, oh, well, it's just because it was shorter content, I have looked, there is no, there, there isn't a direct correlation between shorter and completion rate either. So I uh, just wanted to, just for you data junkies out there. Okay. Here is the problem as I see it. The data giants are trying to sell your Rolodex back to you. Remember that picture? your connection and repetition. They're trying to sell your network back to you. All the people you spend so much time building on LinkedIn, all the people you spend so much time building on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, et cetera. They're great for acquisition. It's great to go fishing there. Horrible for retention in the long run. It gets more and more expensive and harder and harder to reach 
and talk to your followers. And that's kind of like chasing the magic dragon. I mean, to go back to my, the, the, the recovery here, what I kind of learned is myself, at least when it came to substances, there was never enough. I always needed more and more and more. So social media is a lot like drugs. Like you need more and more and more just to keep your business growing. Like a hundred thousand followers used to be enough. Now it needs to be a million. Now it needs to be 10 million. Like I don't subscribe to that. Here's the solution that I recommend is to own your network, create community, build your list, communicate frequently, and then it becomes easier and easier to communicate at scale. Before I jump in, I'm going to take a look at the chat. Great question. We'll ask that afterwards. Chris, the Rolodex is the granddaddy of sliding into someone's DMs. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. Um, I have a client with a, so again, ask, I have a client with a podcast on their app. They're fitness trainers and are very focused on fitness in their podcast. Would you recommend that they venture out into peripheral topics or stay focused only on fitness? I will answer that, but there's, 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 there's partner and adjacent topics that go into fitness. You have nutrition, you have lifestyle. You have all the things that the fitness ICP, if you want to look for peripheral things that they care about, um, okay, you know, now that you, now that you found a fitness audience, do some discovery on what kind of career they have or what other things are going on in their life. And you can expand the topic, but always coming back to fitness. Um, the, the, a great app example would be uh, 10% happier. Uh, Dan Harris, it's a meditation app. They bring in meditation teachers from all kinds of walks of life, but it's all coming back to just the simple concept of mindfulness. So um, making sure that, you know, I, I think that mindset and mental health could be a part of fitness as well, but always coming back to those core things that your audience values. Okay, but back to this scheduled programming. Solution, own your network, create community, build your list, communicate frequently, and then it becomes easier and easier to communicate at scale. Actually, instead of harder and harder, this becomes easier and easier. Some easy ways to accomplish this. You can set up a chat group for your community on Slack or Discord. The most obvious example that I haven't even covered yet is here are like podcast platforms. When you own your subscribers on Apple, and you're releasing, releasing frequently enough, as long as you release within a window of two weeks, the episode will automatically download onto their device. All of your subscribers get your content. It's in the library. It's guaranteed. No other platform does this. <laughs> um, mail, so build an email newsletter. You, you, maybe you can maybe you can communicate with roughly 44% will actually open the email but as your list grows that the the impact of that 44% continues to grow as well it's not like it goes from 44 to 2% overnight that that doesn't make any sense and people will unsubscribe occasionally and the list gets stronger and stronger um, there are some alternatives to slack or discord for uh, community building. One of them is Mighty Networks. Mighty Networks allows you to host your course, allows you to charge for it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one extension that we use is Kajabi and they have a community function too. So there's so many options out there and it may seem overwhelming. Like there will be 10 people in your community to start, but focus on those 10 radically. Focus on building connections. Focus on, um, focus on like the delivering value. And then you'll watch that number grow and grow and grow. And like a snowball, by the time it reaches the bottom of the hill, it's going to just become this self-growing mass of just people that you can communicate to um, deliberately, effectively, and with as much repetition as you want. And you don't have to pay for it anymore. You don't, you don't have to hope that you get a viral video. You don't have to hope that the uh, iOS 14 isn't going to completely wipe out the ability to do profitable Facebook ads. Here's a snapshot from our uh, ComSor, the tool from this. 
is basically like Salesforce, but for community building. I can see at a glance, I just ran a report, um, the impact score. So anything over like point, uh, you know, two is very high. So these are my most engaged people in my community. I can go export this list, communicate with them directly. I can say, hey, Miko, how's it going? Hey, Talon, how's it going? Hey, Hannah, how's it going? Hey, DB, how's it going? And then I, I can just focus on the top 20 most engaged. That is, and, and they're all in Slack. I can literally send them a DM, which is basically like a text message nowadays in Slack. If you're like in the B2B community, it's so effective. And they're also tied into my HubSpot database. I can see if they're opening emails or not. Um, I can't do that on social media. It's impossible. It's just not possible to get that granular. Okay. Before we go into acquisition, I just want to do a quick review. I know it's annoying, but I just want to make sure that we, we, we go through that there's a lot of topics that we're talking about. We talked about total addressable market. We talked about acquisition. We talked about retention. We talked about referral. Referral is the easiest. Retention is doable. Acquisition is hard. Talking to everyone is absolutely impossible. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Referral is a 100x multiplier on your growth, and it's a lot like a match, the fire on a match. If you share it with another match, you have an infinite amount of shareability, the ability to share. It's not going to put out your fire. In fact, it can create a lot more fire. Now, shareability is a function of remarkable content. Remarkable content knows what it is and who it's for. Um, to, to, to do that, it's a function of identity and vision to, to figure out what um, identity and, and vision um, in order to get your vision. What is an end state that's so compelling that I have no choice but to go to achieve it? I know I'm talking fast. Boiling that into a statement that your ICP and your market gets immediately, instantly. Um, we talked about how retention is a function of connection repetition or stickiness as some marketers like to call that. And we gave the Rolodex as an example. We talked about some data that I've seen over 60 of the top 10% B2B podcasts where 67 finish uh, uh, an interview, 67% average completion rate, 91% average completion rate for a solo episode with the host. We talked about some of the problems in the online world today, and we talked about some of the solutions. We also talked about how this can applicably apply to um, a marketing list where now I can see who are my most engaged people and I can communicate with them directly without having to go through a middleman ever again. Acquisition. So let's say you're doing an interview based podcast. I'm going to give you a bit of an acquisition schedule and I'm going to go over some of these things on a high level. I, I think these slides will be made available to you afterward. So feel free to rip off all of it and just use it. Um, the day of an interview, here are some content ideas. Create a selfie video, do a behind the scenes photo, do a LinkedIn post or Instagram live right before hitting the record button. Oh my God, this seems really, really hard. Mention that you're excited for the launch, whatever the guest is offering, ask for referrals. You know, do you know any other guests similar to you? The one thing, okay, so if you're gonna do all this hard work on acquisition to go and grind and roll up your sleeves and get one person and drag them into your funnel at a time, Make sure you're inviting them to a community that you own. Newsletter, Slack group, Discord, anything that is a, a, a gated wall type of community. Um, extras. If you're using LinkedIn, where I'm focused on B2B here, add them to a sales nav list, go through the list, engage with their content. Maybe they see you, maybe they don't, maybe their network sees you. Um, here are some things that will help build your retention. Add your guest to an SMS list. Add your guest to an email newsletter list. Set up a follow-up call, future collaborations and work. Now, the follow-up call is like, that one's critical. So someone will record with a guest and then, and then they'll fail to do any follow-up after the episode is live. That is wrong. What I learned from my great-grandmother is once you get the business card, and you meet them at an event, you actually call them a month later once they hit your rotation. And you say, hey, how's it going? Is there anything I can do for you? By the way, I sell real estate. And eventually they're gonna need to sell their house. 
and she got clients consistently all the time because they were they were she was always following up and building community and relationships are you doing the same thing or are you just kind of letting these new opportunities go by and if they're not a buyer right now you totally forget about them how many marketers are guilty of totally forgetting about someone after you've figured out that they can't buy from you right now it's a totally wasted opportunity okay I said, we're going to come back to this slide. Standard 30 minute interview. What we have found is that if now the guest is sharing that content, that episode, all of that stuff that you did all this really hard work to do, that helps you build some new audience acquisition. This is the most guaranteed tried and true way to make sure that people come to your show is to tap into the existing networks of people that you have on your show if you're doing an interview driven podcast, it works every time, all the time. Now, the five to 10 minute solo episode, this is retention. Listeners stick around to learn from the host perspective. If Susie Guest has 10,000 activated Instagram followers for her lifestyle brand that come onto your podcast, they're going to listen to her not you, not you, but now they may have come, they may have subscribed, they're in your, they're in your world. But then the next thing that you have is just another interview and just another interview and just another interview. They may not like the next person on the list. So what can you do? Get them to like you, the host, say something shareable, say something remarkable. Talk about your identity and vision. Repeat it as often as you can. Stare into a camera um, and, 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 and say these things that will pull somebody into that identity and vision, pull them into your audience, get them to say, oh man, that's a little bit crazy, but I like it. Like that's crazy, but like, I like it. I want to help you with that. I want to be a part of this. Okay, uh, we did that. All right, let's say once, once again, we're in acquisition, so we're in hard mode. So these things are hard. They take a lot of time. You have to hire full-time people to do this and build processes and systems. And it's like, you, you'll you probably get it right 90% of the time. And, and if you don't, then you're just going to blame yourself and it's going to be this whole thing. But okay, one to two days before your episode launches, you can do a selfie video or short written post tagging the guest. You can mention when the episode will be released. You can do a uh, LinkedIn. I wrote this LinkedIn stories. They don't do that anymore. It was a good feature, but they got rid of it. Instagram stories, normal LinkedIn posts, extras. You can send the guest a text, letting them know of the episode release day or be on the lookout for an email with links and hashtags. Still taking a lot of time, a lot of extra work. Uh, the day the episode drops, post a short clip on social media, include links to your audio, email your list. Now you can send, if you are building a list, you can send people back to the podcast. You can say, hey, by the way, we dropped a new episode. And if you're doing your job, then they're coming back. Text or email your guests to ask them to share the content. Extras, create additional clips, share a recast link with the guest. One week after the release, oh my God, more hard work. Um, do another piece of written content. Ask for subscribers and reviews. Thank the guest again with a promotion or exclusive offer, ask them to do business, you know, promote a YouTube link, pull quotes and create images on Canva, prepare a blog post with transcription and embedded episode. So much work. One month after the, the launch. Now here's where, you, here's where you have a really good opportunity is if you invite that same guest you have on your show to a monthly group community networking call or a short live video. Basically you say, Hey, um, all of our season one guests, we're getting them together for a round table discussion and, uh, come, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have some laughs and, and we're going to discuss this topic and, and just have a good time, or we're going to do it as a live stream, um, something like that. And it's just another activation method. Once again, you have someone on your show, you don't want that to be the last time they hear from you or get an invitation to do something cool. You want to be consistently reaching out to them, connection and repetition. Um, you can make some introductions, connect the guests with other valuable relationships in your network. 
your network's only as strong as how many of them are talking to each other also. So you want to be facilitating those relationships as well. But if you didn't hear anything I just said and you wanted one simple slide to follow with all of these to-do list items, um, here it is. Here are all the things that you need to do to do acquisition properly for your podcast. And this is just what it requires. I, I wish the answer was easier, but it's not. The easiest thing is to actually focus on creating more shareable and remarkable content. The second easiest thing to do is to focus on retention and build community. The third easiest thing to do, which is actually hard, is the acquisition. So if you're going to spend all this freaking time, like getting new people to your show or to your business or whatever, you might as well make sure that they stick around and that they tell other people because that's way easier. Okay. I think you get the point at this point. LOL, but what about paid ads? I know there's somebody in the group here that's thinking about that. I know there is. You do the math. If you're gonna start your fo like if you're gonna start your thinking on acquisition as the first thing that you're gonna do, if you're gonna start your thinking as doing paid ads to get more people to your show before focusing on referral and retention, that's that's one to one. You might as well increase your ROI on that ad spend by focusing on retention and referral first. Get these two things right and get get acquisition right with organic methods before advertising. I know this is a real mind blower. I'm telling you that this works. I was asking you to be open to new ideas. If paid growth is your starting point, you make it very hard to scale because then you're propped up on ads. Why did iOS 14 ruin e-commerce? Because all of the people that were buying from your store, a lot of them were one-time purchases. You didn't create enough retention. You didn't have enough referrals coming in. And all of a sudden, when your cost of ads went up, then like you, you're, you lost your whole business. That sucks. That really sucks. So I, I would not recommend building on that straw tower. And I, some people disagree with me. That's fine. I get it. It's okay. You can, you can send, uh, you can send glitter in the mail to me. I'll think it's funny for a second, but then I'll be kind of mad. If paid growth is your starting point, you make it very hard to scale. If you want to crush your growth, join 350 people and start a podcast the right way. It's free to join our community at salescast.community. That is my presentation. Thank you for letting me share it today. Chris, thank you so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Everything from acquisition, retention, referral, and one of my favorite talking points there that the guy's saying something kind of crazy, but I like it, you know, like that unique perspective, you know, you may not be Joe Rogan with rock stars all the time, but that unique perspective and kind of saying what's true to you big fan. I'm biased because I produced the podcast here, but that was phenomenal. I, I can, I can personally say that that stuff is so timely and incredibly relevant in podcasting, not only podcasting, but just content creation, like life in general. Um, do we have any questions from the crowd here today? Is anybody wanting to dive deeper on certain topics? And Chris, you did a phenomenal job at doing some on the fly questions there as well. That was really cool to see. Thank you for that. Hey, Brett. I do. I, yeah, I swear, Rob. man, I try to let the room, I try to let the room go first, man. You know, <laughs> um, you know it's all um, yours. What was it yesterday? Um, I just said, you know, you know, the, the argument or the case for, for podcasting uh, was made last week with your partner. And then again today, Chris, with you, um, and, you know, as far as acquisition is concerned, everything is laid out. It's very succinct, very clear. But what, I, what, I, what I'm hoping for, I'm looking to find information or insight on is, and it's not in the slides here, it's in the editing part. You know, creating the raw footage and converting it into quality content. You know, what, what resources, tools, uh, systems do you, do you use to, to get to that finished, that, that polished you know, in uh, product that you didn't post. Absolutely. I actually have, um, 
I have a tutorial on creating really, really, really good short clips from your videos. If you want, I can I can make that available to everybody. Um, I have some I have some decks on some of those more technical things. Does anybody want to go over some of those things at all? The answer was yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, here was a. Uh, let me find. We have a few more in the chat saying yes, absolutely the short clips. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going through a lot of this. Oh. Okay, um, before I get to that part, this is an important slide that I think Colin touched on. Um, so I won't go over that because Colin touched on it. I know he did last week because I made his deck. Uh, okay, so really, really phenomenally just absolutely sick tool for creating really cool clips is Descript. I don't know if any of y'all have heard of this. Um, for audio engineering, mixing and mastering, Alphonic is, is just, it's, it's the best. It's like you could spend uh, a thousand hours learning Audacity, or you can just upload your file into Alphonic and then let their algorithm sort of clean it up for you. Highly recommend that. But Descript, Descript is just insane. So I'm gonna open up uh, Descript. Let's see, we have some chat in here. Great Prezzo, thank you. you sign into my account. And uh, let's see, open Descript. I'll just, I'll just mess around with a couple of tools and, and show y'all. Of course, when you're doing the demo, it loads really slow. Yeah, honestly, I hate classic. All right, so I'm gonna just make, okay, new project, sample project. All right, here's my workflow. I've downloaded Descript, I have the subscription. Like, okay, what do I do with this thing? Choose file. Let me go find uh, some sort of recent audio file. Here's, uh, okay, call session. All right, done. Transcript will be ready in a few minutes. So I'll just, I'll show you. Now I could have uploaded a video file as well. And, and I'll, I'll show you why this is cool. So it's gonna finish the transcription in just a couple moments. You can see that transcription right in a few minutes blows my mind. We use, we use Rev currently. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's like a couple of days. So, <laughs> but I, I, Colin was mentioning that Rev actually uses uh, Descript operating systems. <laughs> uh, for the, uh, the AI generation. Okay. That yeah. A sense. lot of these, see, here's the, here's the thing about tech and tools and SAS and all these things. Um, a lot of them are using the exact same core technology with a different wrapper on it with just a dip, like just with, uh, a, a different presentation. Okay, here's my transcript. Blah, blah, blah. This is actually, I don't know why I'm using this audio file, but this is Colin making a cold call <laughs> for, for like uh, sales for sales. Uh, all right. So let's say I wanted to remove ums and ahs from my audio. All right. Click on here. Remove filler words. It's going to get rid of every time like uh um uh can um uh you know so uh apply to all done clean that up all right now i've done that i can go and just export the audio here i have a linear editor right here where i can um i can grab things and move them around i can say you know what i don't even want this sentence yeah i'll make it super quick highlight the sentence hit backspace. It's not there anymore. I'm editing based on the text. I'm not even in an, I'm not even like in an editing program. So here's, here's something cool. Uh, I can put a compressor on here. I can put an equalizer effect, but let's say like, I just want to make a really, really fast piece of content. 
We help 60 plus companies drive revenue through podcasting with the strategies that they help them with. Not a great sentence, but who cares? File, export, audiogram. We here, now I have a video in like two seconds. Uh, I can do accent color. Let me do dark mode. And then I can even, um, I can even add an image behind it. So let me find an image that's somewhat relevant. This is not relevant at all, but who cares? Now I have an image uh, behind that. So I hit publish, generating audiogram. And then within, you know, however long that took me to do those things, I have a, a a piece of social media content. And so I can go and, and actually now that's in my downloads folder and I have that clip for like whatever um, social media platform on Descript. And now that I finished like editing my episode, let's say I don't want this sentence either. File, export, uh, project access, excuse me, export. Now I can export all the text to Microsoft Word. I can export subtitles to go use, or I can export these things to Adobe Premiere or whatever um, for your timeline. Um, if, you, if any of you are Premiere users, they actually have a transcribing tool now inside of Premiere. So you don't even need to do this step. Uh, you could do, um, if you did have can video- Can I just chime export. in real quick? Go ahead. I'm so sorry. Um, here, here's the thing. This, oh, there's two things actually. So yeah, please. Um, I would submit to Brett and obviously Conley's not on the call today. I would submit to you guys that similarly to um, in year one of, of the community sessions where you had Dennis Hughes think tank, where it was already kind of like a, a 12 week program, 12 week sure. and every week it was something different. Uh, I would, I would definitely submit to you guys podcasting from you know, podcasting from A to Z. And maybe if we can have these, uh, more of a, a recurring theme where now we're focusing on this particular type of software for, you know, working on your script or this particular type of software, you know, to work on actually the video editing and things of that nature. Uh, Cause I think these, this would be very uh, helpful for the group because I think we're all at different uh, places in terms of where we are with our podcast, whether we're just getting started or we already have one and we're looking for ways to acquire a larger audience. What I was looking for was just, you know, you showed a video or an image of yourself you know, sitting across from a gentleman who at first I thought it was Rodney Dangerfield. But anyway, you said, you know, we started, you had nothing, you had a, you know, a Logitech, you know, um, webcam yeah. and that was it. My thing is like, uh, should you, you know, you gotta have like an intro reel. You gotta have, you know, you know, where do you get your, you know, uh, license free audio? Uh, you have to have an, uh, uh, how do you block, you know, the podcast, you know, intro, um, summary, you know, get them, you know, get them in the beginning. Uh, and then at the end, there's a close or a recap. So I know that's kind of the way the Conquer Local podcasts work, at least the one I remember from the one I did. You know, those types of things I'm wondering, like in terms of editing, how do I structure it so that it's it's in line with, you know, what the 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 majority of podcasts are, but then I can make it my own, make it more unique. So you and I'm only six, I know where Oh we're yeah. At time, if we so were doing um, for. this was supposed to be like a um a growth and marketing session. So but content happens to be one of my favorite things. So I could talk about it all day. Um, here would be uh, a pretty, um, I have a whole convention around naming. I have a whole process around like what the intro should be. Um, so, and I can walk people through a workshop. Like it contains a few elements. A good intro is the name of your show, who it's for, why you're doing it. Um, so here's an example. Welcome to the Rise Podcast with myself, Steve Schmidt. This show exists because we believe that we rise by lifting others. In business, it all counts. So today we're taking you on the journey of real American business owners and their story, how they've risen to where they are today, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then it rolls into a plug for the company because we always want to be promoting what we're doing. This show is brought oh, to you by Ty. Spot on. Oh, God, that, that's spot on. So if you can drop maybe your LinkedIn connect or contact information in the chat or something so we can reach out that's that's exactly what i was looking for sales sorry for the rest of the group i didn't know uh, i didn't want to if you um 
we have if you join our slack group i'll like i'm happy to send you everything um anybody here i mean if you want to be able to talk to caller and or, or i um we're available by dm not 24 7 but like normal business hours and like post questions and people are helping each other out um we've got a lot of different tutorials we also did a pretty in-depth tutorial on how to get yourself booked on shows i did a whole thing on on actually launching and content um i did a, a tutorial on um whatchamacallit on like creating really nice uh short clips so i showed you like the easy version for short clips but there's some nice things that you can do on headliner um i did some more like adobe creative suite tutorials the thing is tools don't really matter it's more like understanding the underlying reason for the usage of the tool like okay um arbitrarily going to Home Depot and buying a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver makes no difference if I don't understand what kind of screw I have to unscrew. So I could, that's the problem with like SaaS companies and tools and things right now is they understand you and your problem so deeply and present their tool as the solution so effectively that by the time you swipe your credit card at the end of their funnel, you feel like you solved the problem. And that's the problem. You didn't solve anything. You bought a tool that you don't know how to use. <laughs> Such a great analogy. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, that's Chris. So I'm going to step in really quick here too, Chris. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of questions surrounding the SalesCast community, and how to get in touch with Chris and Colin maybe further. Um, I will create a community session, or sorry, a community post following the session here. That's going to have all the contact information, the link to join the Slack community as well. Um, and then maybe some more information on how to get in touch with Colin and Chris. Um, as I stepped in for Colleen today, I am a little late to a meeting right now, but I want to let it run a bit further just because this is such a timely and a, a huge conversation. Um, well, I need, I, just, to, I, think... I need to jump pretty soon as well. So I probably okay. have time for like one more question. Does anybody have anything else? And if you have a question, you don't want to ask it right now, that's okay in the community and you want to just do one-on-one -on -one, i totally get it um so don't don't feel don't uh feel like you have to ask it right now but if you do i have time for one question <laughs> robert's using obs studio Three. that's cool yeah robert's styled with that right. stuff no other questions i think we're done there we go mic drop chris decker ladies and gentlemen Thank you so much for joining us today. You and Colin really brought her home. Uh, he just set you up for that alley -oop. You slam dunked it here. That was perfect. Um, we look forward to being in touch with you guys. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to share that post in the community, how to further get in touch and join that community. I'm in it, and it is a phenomenal resource for myself. People are very active in it. Um, Chris, thank you so much for your time today. I hope you guys all have a lovely weekend happy friday oh man i love being able to say that happy friday um have a safe weekend and it was nice seeing you all today all right see y'all later bye-bye